Hello friends, welcome back. It's time for another episode of Big Dino Plays Kingdom Death. We're on Lantern Year 28. We have two more showdowns to go. I'm contemplating skipping number 29 actually, because there's no one I really want to fight. I haven't really put any super hard uh, quarries into this um, campaign. We haven't got a, a level 3 Dung Beetle Knight. We haven't got a level 3 Lion God. Uh, don't see too many challenges. Um, so we may just skip 29 and head straight into 30 on the Gold Smoke Knight. But uh, let's have a little bow peep at our, at our survivors for the showdown ahead with Atnus. Um, obviously feeling like we've got a fair bit of ego right now because everything's going so well. But we're taking four survivors. We're not going to take the scout for risk of um, the scout uh, dying or something dying. But yeah, so uh, Allison, who's our sword master, can now wear the leather set instead of the vagabond set. Appreciate that. Domatilla, who's actually an interesting one to take out. She's got this sacred code fighting art, which is a new one. Who's that from? I think that's from the Black Knight. Yes, uh, everyone else on the showdown board gets knocked down, which we can then stand up because all of our encourage encourages everyone. Which feels pretty good, <laughs> I've got to tell you. <laughs> I feel pretty happy about that. Uh, Evil Truman, who's rocking the, uh, the bullfrog dog set, which is particularly awesome, along with the oxidised beacon shield. So, yeah, deflect glorious. Uh, so if we, if we were to wanted to play crazy, we could go deflect two, spend surge, you now have two deflect tokens, and then... We could also encourage all affected survivors gain a deflect token. So we could go to deflect four. That seems nice. Uh, Sydney, our unfroggable tough, the tough with tough. Uh, she gets plus two on severe injury rolls. So the only way she can die is with a head injury. I should probably put her in the regen suit because then she literally never dies and she never suffers any severe injuries uh, except for a head chomp. Anyway. Just continuing to <laughs> fully speculate and be an absolute pest. Let's uh, let's go and have a look at the uh, at the at the showdown board. It's Big Atnas, the big guy. Uh, he's pretty fun. Uh, he's definitely my preferred nemesis in Node Two, replacing the Kingsman. I like him a lot. Uh, we don't have to go on a hunt, so let's just read here. We have stone columns. We have Atnas. Atnas goes first. We don't do anything else. We don't have any other things. We've got the North Star. Wonderful. Uh, let's depart, and then we will also apply some arrival bonuses. I don't think I have any major ones, but Truman and Sydney are partners, so they go to max survival. Okay, so we have a couple of things to do now that we have departed. So the first is... Anyone with, uh, yeah, so Alison has honorable. So she gains a thingy, a strength token. And she also gains a reroll token plus a survival. Uh, no honorable. Good old Truman. He's a weapon. He has got a strength token from Quixotic. Actually, that might have been included now that I think about it. Let's go and have a look. Uh, yeah, he's got two strength from that. Yeah. So he did get Quixotic, but he also gets another one because of the fact that he is honourable. Gains a survival, which is relevant. Gains a reroll token. He is an absolute superstar. Uh, then he also gets to add uh, one to all hit locations from... The armor. Then he gets to add two armor, both from um, carrying two heavy weapons. It's not over, friends. We've got the shrine, so we go one, and we've also got it rang. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Not bad, I say. Any honourable? No. Uh, we, do have a, we do have a few knockdown uh, things here. Now, I was, I was not feeling too worried about um, knockdown 
uh, because of our deflect stand-up thing that we get the benefit. So, yeah. Um, Atmos has a laundry list of cards uh, and a luck token, which will be hopefully an extra wound for us. Curb Stomp, Keen Eyes, which is the real problem. Old Battle Scar, Spark of Joy, Mad Master. And our Swordcraft Master's Presence goes to our Master Person. So let's shuffle some card decks. Swordcraft, wonderful. AI deck. Wonderful. And finally... Hit location deck, and we have a dangling bell. Hmm. I don't like that one. Impervious to start us off. All right, so the monster goes first. Where will we deploy? He's probably our primary target. One, one, one. Done. It's a ledge. Oh no! It's the it's the stupid, it's the stupid minion. Oh no! <laughs> That's so dumb. The little elf comes in. Oh, an insane survive with twenty five insanity. We've actually got two. With Atnus's field of view, may attack this non-existent minion as if it were adjacent to them. Reward, secret fighting art, actualize. Cool. Where does it appear? <laughs> Put the imaginary, do not perform its minion action the turn it comes into play. Minion action, perform limbic stimulation. That's, ah, oh, that's get a, get a thing. So he, every turn he's just putting in, uh, he's just putting in a mood. That sucks. All right, we get a swordcraft card as well from Mad Master. We get eight seconds to look at it. Westwood slash. That's fine. And that's it. Uh, does he do a basic action or anything at the end of his turn? Uh, when do we? At the beginning of the monster's turn, put the imaginary minion trait into play. Done. That's a trait. It goes up here. So we just need to spend someone killing that minion. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, what will the minion be? It will be this bone eater. Where does it come into play? Oh, it literally doesn't come into play. You just get to attack it if you are within, if you're adjacent to it. That's cool. Stupid little Santa Claus idiot. <laughs> That's it, that's his whole turn. Okay. At the end of its monster's turn, if there are any knockdown survivors, they suffer seven damage to the head. Shit. That's bad. <clears throat> um... All right, we probably want to use our knockdown now to get deflect tokens up. So let's do that. Domitilia will use sacred code. Everyone gets knocked down. And then she'll spend a survival, which will stand everyone up. So we will get two deflect tokens on there. We will get two deflect tokens on there. This feels like a very, very strong opening play, I have to say. And two deflectos over here. All right. So she now has her action because that is not a thing. So she can go one, two, three. Oh, she doesn't have a weapon, does she? No. She'll just put up a block, I suppose. Block one. 
the round of the shield. And she'll just go one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. She's done. And she's encouraged. That feels like a nice opening play. Uh, we will go... Do we go... Yes, yeah, so the monster's knocked down. So we've got two honourable people who can't attack the monster when it's knocked down. Sydney, however, does not have honourable. So she will go one, two, three, four, five... She will then spend a survival to dash, which we'll use to give us extra luck on our swing with the jaw saw. Yep. So she hits three times. None of them are perfect hits. Oh, it's a nice start to get the trap. <laughs> If there are no Swordcraft cards in play, the attacker gains... No, so there is a Swordcraft card. Perform Spark of Joy. Spark of Joy. All right, so we flip over this Swordcraft card. Uh, we'll deflect one, since we have Sword Mastery. So we go to three deflect tokens. Atlas is two speed, yes, and two damage, yes, and one luck. So he's three speed. These all hit on a two plus. One, two, three. All three of those are deflected. One, two, three. Very nice. That's a nice way to start with a trap on the second card. I haven't had that a lot this campaign, actually. Uh, that's it. Spark of Joy done. All right. <coughs> She'll spend a survival to surge. He's now standing up, so these will hit on fours. Three hits, very good. One, two, three. Two stance pumped. Two limbic stimulations. Um, First strike. Uh, so it's minus four toughness, so we can't critical these. He is toughness 19, so that goes down to 15. So we're wounding on fours. So, oh, so this one, so that's a one, so that fails to wound, so he doesn't perform limbic stimulation. This one, that's a seven, so he does wound. So he performs a limbic stimulation, and what I'm going to do is uh, move those just slightly above so that I don't have to shuffle through the deck every time. So that's a wound. <coughs> Limbic stimulation. Yearning for surprise. Ooh, attacks in the monster's blind spot. Gain plus two luck. I like that. That's I like that a lot. Uh, so that's that one done. And now this one is a wound. We can, not critical from the blind spot, but two is a fail to wound. That's it. That's a shame. That's in ineffective. Okay, so I think we now do... Allison, she's going to move, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then she's going to dash, one, two, three, four, into the rear, she's going to swing with the sword, she hits on a two plus, she rolls two hits, oh, this is the first strike, and that, so she's critting on quite a lot, so let's hope we crit, we get to choose, four is not a crit, but it is a wound, uh, so, if knocked down, Atnes stands with a hearty laugh and faces the attacker. So, we do a wound. Uh, he then does his reflex. So, all survives in the jaunty zone, so up a bash, and two hits for three damage. So, she's immune to bash. So, she's just suffering three hits for two damage to the boots. 
two hits for three damage. One, two, three. One, two, three. She doesn't have deflect. Uh, and Sydney does have deflect. So her two deflect tokens go away. She, however, suffers bash. <clears throat> so that is all for the jaunty horns. The next one... That is a six, which is a critical because of the plus two luck from attacking in the blind spot. So, the monster gains a minus one accuracy token, which is nice because he doesn't ignore positive evasion. However, we did just critical, which means we do one wound for the attack, and then we also do an additional wound for discarding the luck token. And that is enough to trigger Spark of Joy. So Spark of Joy, we have no Swordcraft cards, so we're fine. Um, she could surge at this point. What is on top of the deck? The Noble Jellyfish. Yep. We will surge with Allison. She has surged and dashed. Uh, so we no longer have plus two luck, but we are two hits. One, two. This is a parry. We get to decide the order though, because we are a sword master. And so that's a critical. Oh, get in. A fancy parry. You catch a glimpse of what the monster might have been long, long ago. Oh my god, she gets an understanding, she gets white secret. And then if you're attacking with a sword, can a permanent luck. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's delightful. It is delightful. You can't attack a monster. Oh, we can't attack when it's blind spot if we knock down. Idiot. Alright, well. I'm sure uh, we would use a reroll token actually to try and get that critical. So, okay, so that does a wound, uh, but it unfortunately also uh, discards the minus one accuracy token and does another wound. And yeah, then we'll do that. That's another critical. Maimed jellyfish gain a random basic resource. One. I love juice. I love that. Okay. So she's done, and that is delightful. However, whenever you end your act adjacent to a monster, you're knocked down. We're going to do white secret, haven't we? White secret. That's cool. I don't even remember that. You get a random disorder. Maybe we will remove traumatized, actually. White secret. Suffer the lunacy brain trauma and remember the story. So we get four insanity. One, two, three, four. And we gain a random disorder and it is somnophobia. We are no longer traumatized. That's a fine one to get. Um, we remember the story of the white secret. What do we roll? We roll a six. Gain the quixotic disorder. We will get rid of... Monster Panic. We'll gain Quixotic. And gain Peerless. That ability is quite good. I would have preferred Ageless. But Peerless for her, given the other ability, Somnophobia, that seems okay. Good. Good work, team. So she's no longer knocked down, she's ended her act. So she's done. We have Evil Truman. He's going to uh, put a swing into the stupid little. Oh my god, he's not going to be able to hit it. He's not going to be able to wound it. His toughness 25. If he hits all three with his bullfrog halberd, though.
yeah, I guess we'll swing on the, uh, with the bullfrog halberd on the stupid little book head. So if we get all three hits, which we'll hit on threes, Actually, if we do our, it, we'll do our, we'll do our thing. So we just need to not roll a one on these three. Three, five, three. We didn't need to do that, but that's fine. Uh, so this one's doubled, and his toughness twenty five. This is strength thirteen. So we need a six. We've got three chances at a six. No. Yes. No. So we've just defeated the imaginary elf, which means we gain the secret fighting art. Actualize. How fun's that? What does it do? Gain plus one speed. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. He'll then swing on fatness. Uh, also hitting on threes. Now, we will spend a survival. No, we won't do that because we get to stand up with fists and teeth. Swinging with the, the great man up. Yep, all three hit, which means we double our hit rolls, which is excellent. We'll double our wound rolls. One, two, three. There is no critical. We're not deaf. So we double our wound rolls. And if we critically wound then we uh, then we knock him down. So we use faded blow for the first one. So this is wounding on a four, but we double that, so it's wounding on a two. It's a four. So we do not fail. Devastating, one, two. Didn't critical. I think we'll do this one as a reflex. That's an eight. It's not a crit. Faded blow. Yep, so that's a wound. So the reflex happens, so we're both knocked down. That's the end of our turn. Everyone will stand up thanks to fist and tooth proficiency. We will get all of our survival actions back, which is wonderful. Uh, Atmos will draw a card and he will also deal a swordcraft card to the person with thingy. Eastwood slash. Easy. Freezing club parry. The closest threat in facing. It is our dude with two deflect tokens and a bajillion armor. He's five speed. Oh, he keeps doing this card. Unless you are wearing fur or heavy gear, suffer bash. I need to dash out of the way of that. Uh, so he just automatically hits on a three plus. So one hit, we deflect twice. Body and hand. It's four damage a piece, which goes to six damage a piece. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spend a survival to dash. Okay, so there are no threats in Atnus's facing, so he does not perform that card again. The imaginary elf does not perform limbic stimulation, but he does come back into existence. Very, very good. Stupid minion. <laughs> What's on top of the hit location? There is a wound. So Atnus does not perform curb stomp because no one is knocked down. Keen, old battle scars. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, all right. Probably jaw saw now, I think. No one's knocked down. Sydney will uh, need to spend a survival. She'll give up her movement and she will swing with her jaw saw. Bzzz. Three hits, including no perfect hits. One, two, three. 
One, <coughs> two, three. There is some wound reactions. And the monster is knocked down is a bad one for us. We'll probably do that order. If we critically wound, we knock him down. So that'd be fine. Basic action. Does he perform limbic stimulation? No, he deals a swordcraft card. I don't like that. Maybe we will do this dashing coat button. Seven, it's actually a critical. Uh, which means he's knocked down because of our grand weapon proficiency. If you critically wound, the monster is knocked down. So that means we ignore that. We gain an iron. Fine, we'll pop that in the storage. Uh, do we have Faded Blow? We don't, no. So that's just one wound from the Jaw Saw. No, oh, it's Savage. I forgot it's Savage. How good's that? And Reach too. Oh, I love it. Uh, so these reactions are now cancelled because he's knocked down. So that's another critical. Gain of Population. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. And then this one, the Jolly Rump, that is a wound or not? Jaw saw 14, not a wound. Shame. Okay, so Atnes is knocked down, which means the other two can't attack him. So we might do the Bullfrog Halberd onto the imaginary elf. Three hits, which means we double the hit roll, which means we need a six. So that's no, no. Yep, so we defeat the imaginary elf, get actualized again, which is fine. Uh, he can't attack, so yeah, so we need to spend a survival on the jaw saw and surge. Hitting on threes, three hits, and one, two, three. If maimed jellyfish is in play, perform an automatic critical wound. Archive this card. Gain a minus one accuracy token. That's automatic critical, which is savage and does two wounds. He is knocked down, so he's going to stand at the end of this attack. That is also a critical. Discard all Swordcraft cards in play. Fine. And this one is a four, which is not even a wound, is it? Fifteen. Not a wound. That's impervious. I bet you the traps after that, because I probably did a bad job shuffling. So what we might do then is use... Evil Truman to search. Monster is now no longer knocked down. He hasn't surged yet. No, he's surging now. Uh, two hits, damn. No perfect hits. He's already faded blowed. Was I right? Oh, I wasn't right. Uh... Six is not a wound. If your attempt is even, give all of your swordcraft cards to other survivors, which is fine. And then this one, that's a nine, which is not a critical, is it? No luck token, no, but it is a wound. It's... So, gain a swordcraft card and end your attack. So if we go down the list now, Uh, Evil Truman has had both of his attacks. Sydney's had both of her attacks. He has a minus one accuracy token. The elf is out of play. And <clears throat> there is one swordcraft card. 
This fat fucker hasn't even moved yet. Allison will swing uh, with the wrath. One hit because of sad frog dog song. We actually get to she. Yeah. She got an innate luck. That's a critical because of the innate luck. Draw another hit location and gain two strength for the end of the rest of your attacks. That does two wounds. One, two. Because of the uh, minus one accuracy token we discard. Surely we've got the trap now. No, plus two toughness to wound this location. So we wound on a one. Uh... Come on, two plus. Oh my God, we rolled a one. Why did you say that, Deno? <laughs> That's the end of our turn. Um, as long as we, yeah, so if we look here at the, so the trap is on top of the deck. Okay. So the card that he's gonna do is freezing club party. So we will surge with Evil Truman. We're gonna try and proc the trap. So we successfully hit twice, we gain the trap, and one other card. Can we cancel the trap? We cannot, so all survivors are doomed. Uh, well, at the start of his turn, we also deal a Swordcraft card here to the Master's Presence, and then he performs Spark of Joy. Fine. So we're still in the middle of his action. And so once we complete this Swordcraft cards, we just need to do a single wound and we will win the showdown. The imaginary Elf has come back into play, but, oh, impervious, wonderful. Okay, so we'll start over here with the Swordcraft card, which is Northbound Slash. So he's the only target. Uh, it's three speed, hitting on a two plus. All three hits, he has no deflect tokens left, so those go on the waste, waste, waste for a total of 15 damage. And he gets knocked 10 north. Whee! And then, that's his card done. This one could be more problematic though. This one is targeting whom? Nope, it's just Allison, so that's nice. Uh, three speed, hitting on a two plus. This could be awful. Oh, we get a one. Good on you, Allison. Just don't roll the legs, Deno. <laughs> Head and hand. Eight damage each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the end of the trap. So now, Allison will swing with a surge. She rolls a perfect hit, she hits twice. One, two, as long as she doesn't roll a one, we successfully, we get a critical. So discard any moves in play, and once again, it's a minus one evasion token. Boom. Atmos. Chopped to bits. Wrath is, is easily my new favourite sword. Easily. Just easily. Um, cool. So we roll a dice. So we roll a 10 something. We gain a lot of population. They gain the benefits of settlement newborn. We do have storytelling. We increase the settlement limit, survival limit by one. Very nice. Uh, and what do we get? Sword proficiency levels. So, Evil Truman got his spear wound. Sydney got her grand weapon wound. We'll complete the showdown. We will return and advance the year. We have lots of endeavours. We don't have the lantern from the scout, so we will have to roll two of these. Sorry, we'll just have to roll one of these, I should say. Mm. 
Which column? This one. Which column? This one. And which number card? Number five. One, two, three, four, five. And it is. <laughs> no, not evil Truman. He does have marrow hunger, so he can be the murderer, though. He's also got the highest insanity, so he's gonna he's not gonna murder his partner, is he? Who else is there to murder? Has anyone else got marrow hunger? Evil Talitha. We're gonna we're gonna murder evil Talitha. That's what you get. Your soloist. <laughs> Uh, that's, I think that's twice that I've flipped murder on not having a scout lantern. Uh, what do we do with Evil Truman? Evil Truman is nominated as the greatest fighter in the settlement and he gets 3 hunt XP. He's our new favourite. 3, three. And he gets to choose his things, so he's fine. He's fine with what he's got. So I think the only things we want to do is get Spear, Mastery, Grand Weapon, Mastery. Um, we'll once again roll a Shrine. And we've got our Bell of Challenge. Don't need a storytelling. Don't need to cook. Drafting table's a bit late at this point. We might use drums actually and start getting some more survival on people. Yeah. So we're gonna try for Grand Weapon Mastery on Sydney. Actually we can get her to her age milestone, so we might do that too. Yep. So Truman will tell her great stories about how good hunting is, one, two, to get her to the next age milestone. We'll do the shrine. And then we're gonna do a couple of nightmare trainings. So we'll roll her age roll. She rolls a seven, which I'm pretty sure at that age is and a weapon fighting art. Let's have a look. Enhanced senses, gain a random fighting art. Very good. So she's going to lose leader and she's going to gain last man standing. Very good. Uh, her nightmare training, she spends three survival. One, two, three. She has to spend a survival or die. She'll try again. One, two, three. Seven. She'll spend a survival to re-roll. One, spend a survival or die. So she's had a fun time. <laughs> and Evil Truman will have another crack at her. Three. He has to spend a survival or die. One, two, three. We'll try again, I guess. Spend a survival or die. Good. That was an effective nightmare training session. Um, yeah, we're going to call there. We're just going to set up for the uh, Gold Smoke Night, friends, because I don't think there's any level three monster that uh, is going to provide as much of a challenge. Uh, I'm not going to hunt the level three Screaming Antelope because everyone would run away. I could quite conceivably throw out three rubbish survivors and uh, and be comfortable in that victory. So I think we might just go straight for the big gold smoke night and see if we can get the job done. Our strength is probably light on what I would think. We need a little more strength, but oh, maybe we should use the thing to get the extra to the wound roll. Yeah, we'll do lantern research. And then the following year we'll do lantern research. So. Exhausted Lantern Horde, Lantern Research. We just need to spend stuff. Pulse Discoveries. Let's go read that. 
Lantern Research. Two bone, two hide, and two organ. So yeah, we'll do that twice. We got we got absolute truckloads. Two hide. Two organ. Two bone. One one and then again. Two organ. Two bone. Two hide. Alright. I'm set up for the gold smoke night, friends. Let's see if we can end this campaign in glorious victory. I'll catch you on the next episode. Big Dano out.